Well, this is the fish farm. The f right here, what I'm doing, I've got these um, international bolt containers and uh, dug this hole here with the groundwater in it. What I'm going to do is bury that so that I can use it as a that'll be the fish tank and then I'm going to cut some of these in half and make grow beds. And come along with me, I'll show you get a better idea. What I'm doing here uh, this is just the beginning. I've got this closed off with some cardboard and some visqueen, but uh, this is going to be uh, filled with evaporative cooler pads that uh, water circulates over, and then the air will be drawn in through that wall into this room. The air will come in underneath of this uh, grow bed here. Let me put the shade up. It also come in just in front of the window there. And the air will be drawn across the grow bed. And what I've got is a whole house fan up here. So this is my grow bed. Uh, got some uh, fluorescent lights on it. And then what's up with this... Um, the shade here that I can pull up. So this is all uh, mylar, and I'll, I'm going to change this out probably someday. I've got uh, aluminum foil on the walls over here, but uh, it's all to reflect the light around in here. This window I got from my friends Bob and Ann Pace. I'm uh, going to have to get another window made for this one that will fit more precisely. This one came off from their slider door. Well, I just took this pump out of the out of the pond. I've been using it to um, create a, uh, a strong current in the in in the tank here. <clears throat> Let me show you. This is the tank. keep that piece of uh, foam insulation down on the top of the tank here because uh, let me see they'll come up and greet us I'm sure here they are come on guys yeah they get a little excited sometimes and they'll uh, they'll jump right out of the tank I think that's what I'm worried about anyhow so what I got going on here is a pickup tube that goes down to the bottom of this tank and uh, it's a 800 gallon tank got the water coming in over here that's a flow meter on top of there uh, sort of maxed out the flow rate is probably about 700 500 about 500 gallons per hour and uh, the, I just I just put it on there, but <laughs> it's a little underrated. I think it only goes up to 250 gallons per hour. So what I got here is a pickup tube that goes down to the bottom of the fish tank and uh, picks up uh, water and debris, and then the overflow comes out into this spin filter that I built. Um, the spin filter can be um, emptied with this valve here, and it uh, flows into my drain. Um, coming out of the spin filter, you know, let me pull this uh, blind up. There we go. Comes over here, and uh, this is where the fish tank water is ending up in, going down into this gravel bed. The water in here. Um, ebbs and flows in and out of this grow bed uh, for a hydroponic situation. The water nutrients are all kept uh, at just the right levels, just naturally by the fish. Although I, I do have this laboratory set up where I, I uh, 
monitor my um, chemical levels every day, the ammonia, nitrate, 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 uh, phosphate. I, I add a little salt to the system, so I've got a salt meter here, uh, measure the phos phosphate and um, pH and yeah, so I've got a little scale set up here for measuring how much food I'm feeding these guys and uh, try to come up with a good calculation of how much it should be feeding them by estimating their weight. And down here I've got some uh, duckweed growing. Um, they like to eat the duckweed, it's, and it's a good healthy food for them because it's, you know, it's a live green food that they can enjoy. And this is an empty tank um, that I'm going to just keep going. Uh, I'll just add a little ammonia to it every once in a while just to uh, make sure that it's always available, but it'd be like my little hospital tank in case I have a fish that I have to take out of the big tank. and and. Uh, completely isolate from the other from the fish community oh let's see what else can I show you well this is a larval separator and it really didn't work very, work out very well for me so I disconnected it um, there's two therm uh, th thermometers on here uh, this is the incoming water this is the exiting water after it flows through this uh, water heater down here that I built. Oh, let's see. Yeah, so uh, I got this, uh, a lot of this material I actually got from, from our church, which was recently remodeled. I got this sink. Um, well, that's about all I wanted to show you. What I'm going to do, though, is I'll probably take all the gravel out of this bed and build several more outside out here where all these IBCs are and uh, this this bed will become a um, it'll just contain water and I'll float uh, styrofoam on top and grow the um, lettuce and tomatoes in here I mean lettuce lettuce and uh, spinach in here on a floating bed and then move things like um, tomatoes and let's see I got a pepper back here and strawberries and uh, let's see got some oregano growing back here now I'll move that kind of thing outside so it could have more uh, full sun and of course I'd still go ahead and plant uh, lettuce out there too and lettuce and and um, spinach in the summertime but uh, yeah that will be sort of a seasonal thing where where that's uh, operated out there but in the in the winter time I'll probably just do uh, spinach and lettuce inside here and and augment uh, the light with um, these fluorescents even though I, I do have nice big windows here and I just feel that uh, it needs more light uh, so there is my tour of the grow room